In the beginning, the Maidu Indians believed the earth was inundated by a great flood that made the world cold and unbearable. When the waters finally receded, a mountain towering high above the land issued forth great smoke and fire. Its heat warmed the world and gave the Maidu people a place to make their home. So ever after, as they gazed upward, the Maidu saw something more than just a mountain. They saw a source of life, a symbol of the Earth's inner power. They called the volcano Kom Yamani, or Snow Mountain. We call it Lassen Peak. When explorers and scientists came to this place in the 1800s, they marveled at its beauty. Views seen among these pinnacles and rocks are some of the most picturesque imaginable. A series of photographs would be treasures indeed. William Brewer, geologist, 1863. Today, we too revel in the splendor of Lassen Volcanic National Park. Its majestic mountains and hushed forests. Still lakes and buzzing meadows. Graceful streams feeding wild waterfalls. Yet, as the Maidu realized, there is something more to this landscape than its beauty. Beneath its tranquility, a hidden story is waiting to be told. In 1914, this story was caught for the first time on camera. On the afternoon of May 30th, Lassen Peak suddenly erupted. Several weeks after the first blast, Benjamin Franklin Loomis, a local businessman, captured an eruption in a historic series of photographs. We saw huge columns of smoke ascending 500 feet above the mountain. The sight was fearfully grand. To say we were excited is putting it mildly. Benjamin Loomis, 1914. These explosions were nothing compared to those a year later. On May 19, 1915, a blast of steam sent hot rocks spilling over the northeast flank of Lassen Peak. The rocks melted the winter snow, forming a colossal mud flow that roared along for 12 miles. This mud dragged along trees and boulders and deposited them far downstream. Lassen Peak then fell silent until three days later. The eruption came on gradually at first getting larger and larger, until it finally broke out in a roar like thunder. Benjamin Loomis, 1915. On May 22nd, a towering column of ash and gas blasted 30,000 feet into the air. A superheated avalanche of ash, pumice, rocks, and gas then raced down the mountain mowing down an entire forest in its path. In a matter of days, Lassen Peak 
had given the area a breathtaking makeover. As stunning as this devastation was, it was only one of countless eruptions that have rocked this place. For these quiet mountains were all once volcanoes. Imagine if we could look out over this land, not just today, but over the past thousands, even millions of years. We would see a landscape that is always changing. Volcanic eruptions reshape the land. Then, during long periods of calm that followed, life adapted to the new landscape. The day wears on. The sun is warm and balmy. Silence broods over the peak. All is quiet here. So quiet that thought and imagination wander. William Brewer, 1863. This hushed landscape is rich with volcanic features. Lassen Volcanic National Park is one of the few places on Earth to possess all four types of volcanoes. But how do we find them? How do we uncover their stories? We read the landscape. Look closely at this forested slope. Hidden beneath these trees lies a once powerful volcano we call a shield volcano. Prospect Peak used to look very different than it does today. Around 250,000 years ago, this volcano emerged through a series of eruptions. Its lava was so fluid that it flowed down the volcano's long sides, adding layer upon layer, building the land higher and higher, until the broad slopes we see today were formed. In time, life returned and covered up Prospect Peak's violent past. Another kind of volcano is easier to read, the cinder cone. Volcanic cones rise sharp and steep, some with craters at their tops, into which we see circular hollows like the great nests of fabulous birds. William Brewer, 1863. Lassen's cinder cone erupted in 1666. Lava shot out under tremendous pressure and shattered into millions of shreds of cinder and ash. The fragments then fanned out and fell, forming the unmistakable cone shape we see today. But that wasn't all. Lava also poured out from the base of the cone and created the dark, fantastic lava beds. When falling cinders touched down upon this hot lava, they changed color, forming the lighter, painted dunes. A third kind of volcano rises above the landscape, Lassen Peak, a plug dome volcano. Its lava was so thick and pasty that it oozed out slowly and pushed upward higher and higher until it eventually fashioned Lassen Peak into one of the world's largest plug dome volcanoes. Finding the fourth kind of volcano, a composite volcano, may be a little more challenging. Over a period of 200,000 years, 
Brokaw volcano exploded repeatedly. With each eruption, thick layers of lava deposited onto its top and sides, often inching the volcano taller and taller, until it grew to enormous height and loomed over the entire region. Then, most of it vanished. What happened? How can a volcano disappear? The answer lies in the observations of one visitor to this area, John Muir. Nature is ever at work, building and pulling down, creating and destroying, keeping everything whirling and flowing out of one beautiful form into another. John Muir, writer and explorer, 1899. As Lassen's volcanoes were growing with each new eruption, other forces of nature were quietly, relentlessly tearing them down. To understand these forces, we have to read nature's fine print. Volcanic rock is surprisingly fragile, which makes it easy for wind, rain, and gravity to erode it away. As the winter snow melts, it carries away bits and pieces of the mountain, pebble by pebble. While these forces of erosion may seem inconsequential, over time, they possess enough power to wear down even the largest volcanoes. All that remains of Brokaw Volcano today are four small remnants. Pilot Pinnacle, Mount Diller, Mount Conard, and Brokaw Mountain. There is another destructive force, glaciers. Several times over the past two million years, massive fields of ice formed high in the region's mountains and then descended down through the valleys. The glaciers scraped and tore at the volcanoes, carving long, slender ridges, until warmer temperatures finally arrived, melted the ice, and unveiled a whole new landscape. We can find clues to the glaciers' powerful impact in the flattened rocks they left behind the gigantic boulders they transported, and the glacial basins that filled with water and dot the landscape today as lakes. Journey to Chaos Crags, and you'll find evidence of another destructive force that tore away at a volcano. Around 300 years ago, Entire sections of Chaos Crags suddenly collapsed. As huge chunks of rock hit the ground, they shattered into millions of pieces and tumbled downward at over 100 miles an hour until they finally came to rest at Chaos Jumbles. What triggered this catastrophic destruction? An earthquake? An explosion of hot steam? No one knows. It remains one of the park's many mysteries. Our friends showed us some curiosities of the region. A lake of hot water and clouds of steam rising from it. Wherever you climb, you feel hot steam puffing out around you and hear the hissing and gurgling beneath your feet. William Brewer, 1863. The park's greatest mystery lies not in the past, but in the future. When will the next volcanic eruption shatter this calm? To answer this question, Earth scientists read the land. They study the park's hydrothermal areas, record earthquake activity, and search for any bulging of the ground. 
tips that hot magma might be on the move below. To understand how restless the Earth remains here, we can visit Bumpus Hell. Geologists believe that Bumpus Hell sits atop magma six miles below us. This searing rock turns groundwater into steam that bubbles up through mud, creating a dangerous hazard. One that Kendall Bumpus discovered the hard way. Our guide, Mr. Bumpus, after cautioning us to be careful where we stepped, suddenly broke through the crust and plunged his leg into the boiling mud beneath, which burned him severely. Editor of the Red Bluff Independent, 1865. By monitoring sites like Bumpus Hell and studying Lassen's past, scientists are developing a better understanding of what the future may hold. So that when an eruption is imminent, we'll be prepared and can take precautions. Many changes to the land have nothing to do with volcanic activity. They occur with the pulse of the seasons. As summer's warmth fades, Lake Helen gives way to winter's icy silence. The snowpack can run as deep as 40 feet. Every winter, the High Sierra gets snow in glorious abundance. Then all the range looks like a vast beveled wall of purest marble. The rough places are then made smooth, and the ground seems as clean as the sky. John Muir, 1894. Spring arrives late at this high elevation and sets about to undo the wonders of winter. For thousands of years, from the Maidu and other Native Americans to early explorers, to visitors today, we have contemplated the beauty and mysteries of Lassen. We have come to learn that behind the stillness of these mountains and valleys, the earth is always changing. Sometimes with an explosion, or a trickle, or a plop, taking a day, a season, or a million years. Today, Lassen is peaceful, a place to ponder the stories that lie beneath this restless landscape and enjoy nature's generous beauty. Presently, you lose consciousness of your own separate existence. You blend with the landscape and become part and parcel of nature. We are now in the mountains, and they are in us. John Muir.